of the distorted relationship with God. God ain't in agreement with that. When we think that that's a good thing, watch this, read. This is Romans chapter 7 and verse 12. Wherefore the law is holy. God said, what's holy? The law is holy. See that? You and me, we're not holy. What's holy? The law is holy. God's law, that's what's holy. Read. And the commandment, holy. And his commandments, that's holy. Read. And just and good. That's the only time we good with God. Is when we apply his law, statutes, and commandments. You see what I'm saying? How do I learn about it? I open the Bible up and read it. If a person doesn't understand it, how do you Give me that uh, Acts 8. I'm going to show you. You understand what I'm saying? Because it's a process. Repentance is a process. Because that's what we out here teaching. We teach you repentance, right? So watch this. Acts 8 29. Acts chapter 8 and verse 29. Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go near it, join thyself to his chariot. And Philip ran to ran tither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah. And so, so uh, Philip went to an Ethiopian eunuch, and he was uh, he was reading the Bible, right? But Philip, you know, he he walked with Christ, so he's trying to he he seen him reading the Bible. He went over to him, go read, and said, "Understandest thou what thou readest?" He said, "Do you understand what you read?" That's what Philip said to him, read. And he said, "How can I, except some man should guide me?" Read that part again. How can I, except some man should guide? Me? So that's the point right there. Us as black men. We need guidance in the scriptures. You understand what I'm saying? So that's what we are here to provide. We this, this is what we did. Give me that in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. I want to show you something. What's your name once again? Ty. Ty. Okay, Ty. I want to show you something, Ty. Watch this. Read. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Unto who? Unto God. To man. Unto God. To Ty. Show thyself, study to show thyself approved unto God. See that thing right there? We got to study to show ourselves approved unto God. Guess what? When you got fear of God, you ain't worried about what nobody in this world think. That's right. You don't give a damn. You understand what I'm saying? Because you have the understanding. Come on. A workman that needed not be ashamed. You're not going to be ashamed. You understand what I'm saying? Some people drive by and they look at us like we crazy. We looking at them like you crazy. Y'all the world's crazy. You understand what I'm saying? You see what's about to go down. It's about to be a famine out here. It's all kind of uh, uh, disasters that's happening. You understand what I'm saying? And you ain't right. You're not trying to get right with God. The only one that can save you from a nuclear bomb. Can't not, ain't nothing a man can build that's going to save you from the nukes that they got pointed at this place. You understand what I'm saying? So the teachings that you're accustomed to is what? Christianity? Give me that in Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. I'm going to show you something. And do you guys have a church? Or do you have a yeah, we got a school. We got a school. It's on the back of that fly. The address on the back of the fly. Okay, okay. okay. yeah, we got a school. But watch this. I want to show you the difference between um, us and Christianity. What's your understanding of grace? What that mean? God's grace. Yeah, well, what is God's grace? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm the wrong person. About okay, just say you don't know. Okay, you don't know what grace is. I'm going to show you what grace is because in Christianity, they say you can do whatever the hell you want to do because you're under grace. you cover in the blood. That ain't what God said. God said he's going to judge you if you're in the midst of sin. So let's get that first. Let's build a foundation first. Let's find out what grace is. Come on. This is Titus chapter 2 and verse 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. So guess what? God's grace is upon all men. So meaning you have an opportunity. We are under grace. But we're going to find out what we're supposed to be doing with that grace. Grace means time, basically. You understand what I'm saying? You know how like when you don't pay your cell phone or, or bill on time, they might not come, cut it off that day. They may cut it off five or six days later. What time period is that? Grace period, right? That's what we living in right now. Grace superior with God to do what? Keep reading. Teaching us. That oh, hold on. What are we supposed to be doing with this grace? Teaching us. In this grace, we're supposed to be getting taught something. Read. Teaching us that denying ungodliness uh -huh. and worldly lust. So in this grace that we got, we're supposed to be going to the Bible and learning to deny ungodliness. You understand what I'm saying? So now you got to say to yourself, well, what does God deem on Godly, right? What is sin, right? Where, where am I sinning at? Where am I falling short at, right? 
Give me the Sabbath day. Give me the Sabbath day. What day is the Sabbath day? Yeah, Sunday. That's right. I'm gonna show you how important this, how important Saturday is to God, because we think that that's a day that we supposed to. We think that that's a day that we're supposed to do whatever we want to do. You understand what I'm saying? That's not Saturday is not our day. Come on, give me that. Uh, Exodus chapter 31 and verse 16. Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath. You know what? Start up at 13. I want to show you something. Verse 13. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generation. See that? The Sabbath is a sign that you keep, that we keep between us and God. You understand what I'm saying? That's part of the contract that we made with God. Read. That ye may know that I am the Lord that do sanctify you. See that? Read. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. See that? The Sabbath day is holy unto us. Read. Everyone that defileth shall surely be put to death. See that? Read that part again. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. But back then, when you put any, any laws on the Sabbath day, guess what happened to you? You got put to death, right? But now we under what? Under grace. You see? But you read. For whosoever uh, doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut out from among his people. You see that? So people was put getting put to death back in the time of Moses for trying to work on the Sabbath. So guess what? That ain't changed. We still got to keep the Sabbath. But guess what our people doing? They still working on the Sabbath day. You understand what I'm saying? Because they God, they don't, they don't fear God. They fear man. Now read on. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord. Holy to him. Holy to the Lord. That's holy to the Lord. The Sabbath day. Read. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. See, back then, wasn't no grace. So get, I ain't going to say it wasn't no grace, but there was a very low tolerance. You understand what I'm saying? Back then, you got stoned almost immediately. But what did we Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath day to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations. How long? Throughout their generations. Now, it, it, it stopped when Christ came. Throughout their generations. Who's above Christ? Who, 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 who oh, sent Christ? God, right? So is Christ's word above the Most High God? No. So read that again. To, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath day to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel. Between who? Between me and the children of Israel. That's God. You understand what I'm saying? So the children of Israel are who? Those are the children of God. Right? So if you're not saying that you're an Israelite, you're not a child of God. If you're not keeping a Sabbath day, you're not a child of God. You understand what I'm saying? Keep reading them. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For Hold on, how long? Forever. I mean, the children of God, the ones that say they got a relationship with God, the ones that say they believe in God, they keep it a Sabbath day, ain't they? Read. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And he gave it unto Moses. Uh, what he made? Where you at? All right, that's it on that. So that's how important the Sabbath day is. So now, we got to learn the rules and regulations of the Sabbath day so we don't break it. Ain't that right? Give me that in Exodus 20. Exodus 28. How do we keep the Sabbath day holy? That's what we're going to go over right now, Ty. So pay attention. Pay close attention. Come on. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day. Hold on, read it again. Remember the Sabbath day. You keep the Sabbath day, Ty? Do you keep the Sabbath day? See, you forgot. No, I do, but I no, 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 you don't. I have to. No, you don't. No, 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 no. You want to? Want You're to. learning now. I'm learning because now. just like we read Acts right. eight, you have to be taught. Right. We're teaching you. Because I'm not doing it now. Working right now. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's okay. So right. So right. so so, so that means so, okay. So right. you forgot. You you forgot. You know you didn't remember. You got to keep the Sabbath day. No, no. I thought you said do I keep the Sabbath day? That's yeah. what I thought you so said. that's a no. So my question was no. That do I remember? Now I know, I'm going to remember that. All praises. Come on, read. 
Remember the seventh day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. So it's going into how to keep it holy. Meaning, you got six days. You got from, um, from Saturday sundown all the way to Friday sundown. Those are the days you can work. Provide for your family. You understand what I'm saying? Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Whose day is it? It's the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. See that? Yeah, but they don't, they don't, they, they like to come together on Saturday. They still, wait a minute, I'm, I'm going to show you. They like to come together on the Saturday, but they don't follow these rules and regulations that I'm putting in on. That I'm going I'm I'm to break down. They don't keep it holy. They come together, they don't keep it holy. You see, it's a difference. See that, watch, we're going to find, I'm going to show you. We're going to find out as we, as we go through. Yes, you need to come to class, brother. But hold up, hold up, let's finish it. Come on. In it, thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter. See that? So you ain't supposed to. You ain't supposed to work. Your children ain't supposed to work. So by you not working is teaching your children they ain't supposed to work on the Sabbath, right? Come on. Thy manservant nor thy maidservant. See that? If you own a business, like you may own St. Louis Barbecue, it's supposed to be close to that because if it's open, guess what you provoke the people to do? Work. You understand what I'm saying? So your children ain't supposed to keep uh, work on the Sabbath day. Your business, if you own one, it ain't supposed to be open on the Sabbath day because who day is it? Is it yours? No, it's God's. You see that? That's how you keep it holy. Read that. Nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in, that means your your workers. Like none of your workers are supposed to be working. Come on. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that was in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day. He did what? Blessed the seventh day. Now he blessed the first day of the week. Blessed the seventh day. He blessed the seventh day. You see that too? Read. And hallowed it. He hallowed that. Means he made that clean. You understand what I'm saying? So that's one thing that we learned that we're not supposed to work on that day. But everybody know that one. But give me another one. Give me another law. Give me that uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah 10. What else are we supposed to do? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me get two more scriptures and then you got to get, don't don't forget your questions. I want I'm gonna want to ask you a question. No, no, no. It's, it's, understand when the Bible come out, questions gonna stay. They're gonna be in your head. But watch this. So now we know one rule, one statute that we're supposed to keep. No working. Right? Read. This is Nehemiah chapter 10 and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring work or any fiddles on the seventh day to sell. So if the people of the land, so like right now we're in the land of America. And guess what? The Chinese man got chop suey on every corner, and he open today. You understand what I'm saying? He's selling us Chinese rice, pork, all kind of stuff. You understand what I'm saying? You got the white man got uh, Lee's chicken open today. You understand what I'm saying? These are the people of the land that's bringing things to sell the children of God. You understand? Read. On the Sabbath to sell that we would not buy it of them. So what will we do? We would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. What day do we not supposed to purchase anything from the Chinese, the Arab, and the white man? We would not buy it of them on the Sabbath. We ain't supposed to buy nothing from them on Saturday if we believe in God. You see that? So we ain't supposed to work and we ain't supposed to buy and sell on the Sabbath day. That's right. Why? Because who day is the time? It's God's day. That's right. You see that? Now give me that in, uh, that's it on there, right? Now give me that in uh, Leviticus 23. So, we're supposed to work. We're supposed to buy a sale on the Sabbath day. One more statute for you. Because we learning how to keep the Sabbath day holy. Right? Come on. Yeah, ready, ready, verse 1. This is Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel. Speak to everybody. Speak to the children of Israel. You're speaking to God's children, God's people, the children of Israel. That's who the Bible is written to. Read on. And say unto them, concerning the feasts of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations. He said the feasts of the Lord, and he's going to go through a list of feasts that are holy convocations unto the Lord. Read. Even these are my feasts. Uh -huh. Six days shall work be done, uh -huh. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. You see that? The first feast he mentioned was the Sabbath day, and it's a holy convocation. 
You know what a holy convocation is? A holy gathering, meaning everyone that believes in keeping the Sabbath, they come together and they meet there. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's what the children of God do. They don't hang around the people of the world on the Lord's day. You understand what I'm saying? They come together with, with believers, people that fear God. They keep the commandments, like keeping the Sabbath day home. That's who you're supposed to be around on Saturday. You're supposed to be going to work. You understand? You're supposed to be going to no graduation. You're supposed to be going to no, uh, no grave site. You understand what I'm saying? You're supposed to keep the Sabbath day holy. Nothing is above that. You understand what I'm saying? That's when you show fear of God. You understand what I'm saying? Now, what was your question? You forgot it? I got a question for you. Do you believe you're an Israelite? Say what? You believe you are. So what then? So what then should you start applying to your life? What should you be start applying to your life? Right, right. Give me that in uh, uh, Joshua chapter one and verse eight. This is Joshua chapter one and verse eight. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So God says that this book, God's Bible, this shouldn't depart out of your mouth. So how you go? How you gonna get to the point to where the the pull out of your mouth? See that exactly. We. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Meditate therein day and night. He gives you. See, this is the thing. So people like to come up to us. They say, "Listen, y'all are brainwashed." Yes, we are. Our brains clean. No brain dirty. What I'm saying? What I'm saying? Our brains have been washed. You understand? We see the evils that our people doing today. They eat pork today. They buying and selling today. They upset at us because we tell them what they doing is wrong, and all we trying to do is save them from the wrath of God. See, the people that's on the other side of this side, they believe in things like accidents. You understand what I'm saying? When God says He kills and makes alive, matter of fact, give me that. We gonna come back to this. Deuteronomy 32, 39. I want to show you something. I want to tell you something, Ty. Hey, y'all come over here. Come over here. Hey, bring them over here, man. Come on, read. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39. I said something, Ty. This is why I read this. Because people believe in things like accidents. If you believe in an accident, you don't believe in God. Watch this week. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. God said what? I kill and I make alive. I wound. I what? I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. See that? See what God said. He's in charge of when you got that. When you when you when you when you when you hit your when you accidentally hit your arm on this. God said He did that. You understand what I'm saying? Ain't no accidents. Ain't no coincidences. You understand what I'm saying? Everything happens for a reason. You understand what I'm saying? You standing here today is not a coincidence. You understand what I'm saying? It's not an accident. You understand? It's for you to hear this word and whoever else is listening right now because we just believe you ain't the only one listening. God said this word don't go out of board. You understand what I'm saying? Now go back to Joshua 1. Come on. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Nah, you just want to do some of the things that you like in there. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Remember God said, God said you got to do everything. He say pick and choose, and that's what they do in Christianity. And that's why the Negro is still at the bottom of society today. Because they're going to go to church tomorrow and listen to a song and dance and then go back to the club all this week. Right. Go back to selling drugs. Right. Go back to holding stuff out on Instagram. Right. That's what they're going to do next week. You understand what I'm saying? But they're going to go to church because they think they're doing something good on Sunday. Right. And that's the worst place to be when God cracked that sky. You understand what I'm saying? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with 
Rojas. Nation is shooting. Nation is you. And finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord. His word, his word.